Well, here we go. It is indeed Karula and her cubs. That is little Shongida, the female cub. Yes, hello. All those flies are biting you. Uh, and this is quite a strange place for us to find, Karula. It's quite deep inside Arethusa. But anyway, welcome to the Sunset Surprise Safari uh, with myself. And of course, where would I be without the thumb and Brian Joubert? So the killer bees are out and about. And we're lucky enough to start the Sunset Safari with Karula and her cub. So little Shongile lying in a little ravine caused by a drainage system. Just need to be on the game drive radio quickly. Afternoon mobile stations. There she is, those beautiful eyes. Oh, and a big fat belly. Oh, she's looking up at the kill. So mom has been very successful. She's caught uh, a yearling impala ram. which is up in the tree. Now let's just move along and see what else is around. Now, if you are wondering uh, about this leopard that is sitting next to us, uh, indeed, we are live looking at three leopards, in fact, in total. So there's one. And uh, there's another. And that's the mother of the cubs lying and sleeping over there. And the young male cub, ooh, I can just make him out through the bush uh, to the left of us. But above mom, or above and to the right, is the impala that she must have caught last night. There's still quite a lot of meat on it. Let me move for you there, Brian. Here we go. Uh, so a year old impala ram foul prey. Oh, to Queen Karula. Okay, so Brian, where Karula is, come back up. And there. Just, okay, a little bit to the left. A little bit there, center screen. There we go. <laughs> up a bit. There's an impala. Snorting, we can actually hear them snorting. Now, I wonder what they might have spotted because Karula's lying quite flat. They might have smelt her. Oh, off they go. So possibly even from the same herd that the tree climbing impala belonged to. Now it's quite warm. Her kill is safe in a tree. So she's going to be sleeping quite contentedly. And remember, if you have any questions about where we are, what we're doing, and what we're seeing. Hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Or <laughs> questions at wildearth.tv on email. Oh, what have you seen? The young male is up to something. So there are two cubs. I think he's just listening to those in parlor. But we don't have the best view of the young male at the moment. He is in quite a little thick section. But we haven't seen Karula and the cubs for quite some time. So quite nice to catch up with them. I think the best visual is of the young female at the moment. Let's have a look if we can get it. Shh. There we go. Now they are growing incredibly fast as ants is. We leave them for a few days and now they've become huge. So they're all present and accounted for. Or three little cubs, or two little cubs and mom. What a wonderful way to start the sunset safari. I'm going to move back towards the little female. She's giving us the best view at the moment. Are we going to free wheel? Are we going to make it, Brian? Yes, no? A bit more? Almost. Okay, start the car. Nice little shady spot there. I was hoping that one of them might be up in the tree feeding. But alas, looks like they're taking 
an afternoon siesta. Now, the big cats of Africa are really fond of siestas. A leopard probably will siesta about 18 hours a day. They have grown incredibly quickly. They're just over six months old now. now. Can you believe the first time they were seen on Safari Live, they were less than eight hours old. Now that is Shongila, which is the little female. And what her name means is the exquisitely beautiful one. And she has those wonderful brown eyes. And what she's listening to is, I think it's those impala, I can hear, maybe not only impala, something else moving through the thickets behind her, but she's not too perturbed by that. See how her ears are always on the move. Now, it's very, very, in we're going to be able to see some very, very interesting behavior. Uh, when it comes to leopard cubs and their mother if both of these two make it to adulthood. So while they are young, up to about a year, uh, leopards have about a 70% mortality rate for the cubs. Once they've got to a year old, that mortality rate drops down incredibly to sort of less than 10%. Now, she's probably going to leave her mom a lot sooner than young Hosanna, the little prince, who's her little mate, her brother. And female cubs generally become independent, sometimes even as much as a year before male cubs. Now, what will normally happen is that Karula will then sequest a part of her territory to the young female to give her a good start in life and to make it a little bit easier for her first few years. She's probably not going to mate until she's about three, even though, or maybe even four, and even though she will be independent, probably, oh, it's, I think we might even have to have some gambles on this one. When will young Shungile become independent from Karula? I say at a year and a half, I think she'll be uh, probably completely independent from her mother. Whereas I think young Hosanna will still be running around after mom getting, uh, getting food. Aaron in New Zealand said, how awesome to see our beloved leopard family again. It's been quite a while. It has been. I can't actually hmm, remember the last time I saw Karula and Cubs. It was a while ago. Oh, such such a precious sleeping little little darling. Oh, there we go. Get more comfortable. So as we're talking about the dispersals uh, of these cubs, it's probably Hassan is probably going to hang around with Kula till he's about two, maybe even a bit older. Uh, before he becomes completely independent from his mother. Now, the reason for this is that male leopards don't have that nice sort of slightly more cushy start that female leopards do, where they have a territory that has been sort of gifted to them by their mother. They have to now go away from their natal territory or their home territory and go into the big, bad, wide world and range for a couple of years, normally till about they're about five or six, sometimes as young as four, but normally about five or six years old, before they can challenge for a territory of their own. And so they probably stay with mom a little bit longer, and mom looks after them a little bit longer, because they need to be a bit bigger, a bit stronger, to survive in the African bush. So they're just under well, they're six and a half months old now. 
And Cat in Tampa is wondering, is it safe to say that these two probably have a pretty good survival chance? Definitely, though, every month they get older, their chances for survival get higher and higher. So the most, the riskiest point is until they're about three months old, or even as when they're not so good at climbing trees. Now they're very adept at climbing. So if a hyena happened to arrive, they'd be up the tree in a flash. So it's all to do with avoidance of other predators. And even if another male leopard um, had to come, they could probably get out of his out of his way. So the biggest killer of leopard cubs is in fact male leopards. And uh, dispersal male leopards, like hopefully young Hosanna, will become. Speaking of young Hosanna, while his sister's napping, let's go see if he's up to something. And I have the sneaky suspicion he's napping too. There he is. You can see that leopard's fantastic camouflage at work. So it's not uncommon for them to lie separately during the quiet times. Look at that, you can just see the sunlight catching his eye through the bush. So, I'll just chat a little bit about where they are in relation to where Karula normally is. So they are quite far to the west. This is what we would generally consider very much shadows territory. I just need to find my... And... The last time I saw Salahesh was not too far from here either. Are you going to move, mister? Are you getting hungry? Such a pretty boy. So now, there's always debate about the male lineage of leopards. So, where or who the father is. And it's always quite difficult for us to, to actually say. So without genetic testing, it's very, very seldom that they'll pick up any physical attributes in terms of similar spots to either their mother or father. And the only way to really tell paternal parentage is through genetics. No, oh, side kitty. Well, he's lying in the bush there. Let me just show you exactly whereabouts we are at the moment. Okay, now let's test. Oh no, don't want to do that. We don't want to do that, Brian. What have I done? There we go, that's what we want to do. So we are actually going to put a red dot where we are. Yeah, and you see that red dot? Or orange dot, if you want to be very particular. So, this is the white is Arethusa, uh, where we are there. And we're on the road called the Magic Willy Road. And traditionally, this area will change colors. Um, traditionally, Karula's territory ends about there. So, this is. 
generally what Karula's territory does. I mean, none of these things are set in oh, wait a minute, what are set in stone. So, so that's now normally this side is Karula, and this side is Shadow. So you can see it's probably from the normal boundary. Ooh, I'm guessing probably about a kilometer and a half, two kilometers from the boundary. And we've been seeing, let's change colors. Oh, well, I don't know what I've done, Brian. Come back, pen thingy. Maybe it's that squiggly line. Oh no, what's going on? Let's try that. I don't, oh, there we go, there's the pen thingy. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so, and also, what we've been seeing, which is quite interesting, and that's a bit too close in colour, I think. Let's go black. Um, so, we've been seeing Salah Hesh all around this area. I've seen her just below the Arethusa Dam. We've seen her all the way down on the Arethusa Airstrip. So, now there's Kruda, and Salahesh has been seen in this area, and she's, this is where the Marikane River system is, and she's been all along here. And that has always been traditionally shadow. So I suppose the big question is, oh, and I get to do this, it's going to be fun. The big question is, where is shadow? Oh. So it's very interesting how the leopard dynamics are playing out at the moment. The young prince is asleep. The queen is fast asleep. And in true royal fashion, showing us her back. So I think our best bet is the princess, or Shongile, the most exquisite one. See if I get my three wheel down the hill right this time. Now, Liss is wondering whether Shungela is going to be small like Karula and Shadow, or she might pick up some larger genes from her father. Oh, I don't know. Liss, we're going to have to wait and see. I think she's going to be small like her mom. She's also quite pale, like her mom, as well. Oh, I thought she might, I was thinking about climbing up that gardenia tree and feasting the pond. that impala. Sorry, my mic's fallen, so if you hear some funny noises, just me fixing it. Okay. So, we are on Arethusa, and we've come out early to get here. Where's the impala? Well, Scout Moose, Brian must have been reading your mind, because there's the impala, Wondering how long the impala will last. I will probably be finished by tomorrow midday. So I've eaten about half. Now they've got full bellies. I'm going to work their way through it tonight and maybe tomorrow morning uh, before it will all be finished. Oh. Now, there's a possibility they might... ...to a scavenging hyena. But when female leopards have cubs, the cubs are, can be a little bit clumsy while they're learning. And they do lose a few kills by dropping them.
Very, very peaceful down in the Tumbuti thicket. Sorry, that mic is falling again. Let me just try it. I have some tape, please. It keeps tickling me and disappearing down my shirt. Well, thank you, sir. Now, of course, if you work in the wildlife film industry, there's two things you can never live without. One is cable ties, and the second is gaffer tape. It fixes everything. Microphone, gaffer tape. Flat tire, gaffer tape. Anything else you can think of, Brian? Injured. Injured. You need a. You need a. You need to. <laughs> there we go. And final control is quite funny today. They say broken heart, gaffer tape. Cable ties. Cable ties. I think that's a dual, a dual, a dual job. You can see she's panting quite heavily from all the impala she's been feasting on. We're going to stay here for a few more minutes and then we're going to have to move on to let the Arethusa guys come in here and enjoy the incredible sighting. They are quite sleepy. I was really hoping we might find one in the tree. But if we come a bit wide, it's actually a very pretty little spot where we're sitting, uh, particularly with the colours of the Tumburti trees and that beautiful yellows and oranges as their leaves are falling off quite late but if we have a look a little bit higher there and you can see there's a little Tumberti thicket and you can see those wonderful colors okay well the little princess is asleep let's see if we can go have a look at the little prince and he might be out in the open a bit more Mom's moved ever so slightly. A little roll onto the back. Uh, deep putt. Deep, oh, sorry, I messed that, messed that up there. Deep putt. What did you hear that? I didn't hear. Deep putt veg, who's a brand new. Oh, she's dreaming. Veg, deep putt veg. Sorry about that. And uh, he's a brand new viewer. And is asking, is this really live? Well, it must be, because I'm answering your question. And uh, what country are we in? We are in South Africa. And more particularly, we're in the low felt of South Africa, which is the north northeastern part of South Africa, in an area called the Sabi Sands Game Reserve. Currently, I'm sitting on Arethusa Private Game Reserve. And we're part of an eight and a half million acre unfenced wilderness area known as the Greater Limpopo Transfrontier Park that makes up the private reserves on the western side of the Kruger National Park, where we're sitting now, the Kruger National Park and the Limpopo Transfrontier Park in Mozambique and in Zimbabwe. So it covers three countries and the animals are able to move wherever they would like. Now, Karula is our dominant female leopard, the female leopard we see the most and uh, quite often referred very fondly by all our regular viewers to as the Queen of Juma. At the moment, she's not on Juma, she's on Arethusa, but I don't think we can take her title away for, for, for straying from her normal home range. But let's go try have a look at the little prince. I think we might be able to get a nice view of him. Oh, no, wait. Oh, oh, the Queen wants her moment. Let's see, Did you see the royal wave? There was the royal wave as she stretched out her paw. I think that's about all she's going to do. We will keep an eye on her, see if she does move. But I don't think so. So if we do have any new viewers there, keep sending your questions in. Hashtag Safari Live or questions at wildearth.tv. So just a quick insight. So 
This is my game drive radio, so I'm connected to all the safari lodges that are in the area. So if they find something or we find something, we're able to share the sightings because the best way to find lots of animals is to share and we can all look for animals together. But let me see if we can get a view of the little prince. And that is exactly what his name means. Hosanna is Shangan, which is the local language here. And his name means the little prince or the little chief. age he's quite a bit bigger than his sister and also fat belly full of impala sleeping in the shade now there's a great misconception that you find leopards draped in trees all the time most 90% of the time we'll find a leopard on the ground so they will put their kills in trees to avoid hyenas and other potential predators such as lions stealing them and when it is very hot uh, you do find leopards occasionally sleeping in trees and that's to get into the wind and to get away from a lot of the biting flies. Oh, just too gorgeous. So I hope you guys are taking screenshots. Share them on our Facebook page, hash, oh, Safari Live, or pop them on Twitter with the hashtag Safari Live. Oh, it looks like he might head back towards the kill. Yay, some movement. Not a sleepy kitty. Or he could just be finding a new spot to sleep. Okay. Let's follow him in. Could be going to see his mom. Could be going to harass his sister. Could be going to have an early afternoon snack. Am I behind us, Brian? We're good. <laughs> Looks like he's just found another snoozing spot. Although he does look like he might be stalking his sister. Now that is a game leopard cubs play all the time. See how his ears are quite flat? Oh no, mom's up the tree. see him he's heading towards mom maybe he's a bit being a bit getting a bit jealous of mom's dinner and try to get into a spot where we can see her so she just ascended the tree to feed it's amazing how incredibly dexterous and agile leopards are. Look at that. So her getting up and starting to feed 
is probably what prompted the little printer to do the same. Any arathusa vehicles? There we go. Look at him lying under mom while she feeds. And I think little Shongile, the little female, is still fast asleep. Ryan, Ryan. Sorry, I just need to chat to the other guys who've just got out. Crunch, crunch. You can actually hear her breaking those bones from here. Roy, Roy. Look at that, right up in the low felt gardenia. So I just got to be on the radio. Uh, Roy, just myself at Kulaman Pimpan, as soon as you guys arrive, I'll make space. Ophim. So I'm just chatting to Roy from Arethusa. We're going to have to move out shortly um, as the other vehicles are going to come in here to view them and we've been with them for the last half an hour. Okay, so I've just got to deal with the game drive radio for a second, so while I do that, let's go say hello to Steph, who's out on foot. <laughs> 